Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button before you leave, that helps out a lot. I also love it when you leave comments, so feel free to provide me with ideas or constructive criticism or what have you. Um, today, I'm going to do a, a piece where the stone itself kind of dictates the design uh, in in that the uh, pattern in the stone is kind of nice and it's got some cool shapes to it and some of the design of the pendant will be mirroring some of that shape. I wanted to um, give a special thanks to um, Beto J Designs and that's uh, a nice lady named Van who uh, kindly sent me some stones and so I'm going to be setting one of her stones today that she uh, made uh, on her lapidary wheel She's also a talented silversmith, so I'll leave a link in the description for you to check out her site. So, uh, thank you, though, um, Van. I appreciate the nice stones. So, before we get started, uh, I'd like to thank my YouTube subscribers. We just passed 6,000, which is amazing. And actually, we just passed 6,100, I think. Uh, I went from 6,000 to 6,100 pretty quickly, so thanks for that, you guys. I appreciate all the support and the kind words, and I look forward to uh, seeing how you guys react to the different videos I put out. So, uh, I have some new patrons over on Patreon I wanted to thank. We have Liz, who's one of my newest patrons. Thank you for signing up. I also have Star B. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, having both of them as part of that community over there. I hope they both enjoy that. Thank you both Liz and Star, I appreciate your support. So, uh, With that being said, let's get started on this project. Let's see what I drew up here. Well first let's look at the stone here. This is the stone that Van kindly sent me. That she made, if I can get it out of here. It's called Candy Jasper. So it's very pretty. I love the way that it's got these uh, she cut it beautifully with this nice shape that kind of mirrors the shape in the stone, and I think that's perfect. So, And that's the shape that I'm going to create my pendant with, basically, is that, or double that, really, and then some, some similar things in it. Uh, so let's look at what I drew up here. I thought about a couple of different designs. This is my design idea book, which is available on my merch store, if you're interested. I find it's uh, useful for keeping things symmetrical for me because it's got this little grid. It's kind of like graph paper but without all the lines. So initially I was thinking I'd put it here and then do this and I, I like that idea too where I just have some maybe some square wire or something coming up that kind of mirrors or follows the original shapes. That would look pretty cool. Um, but then uh, my wife and I were looking for stones that we might put up here with it and we ran across this one. I think it looks really good if we do something like that with it. It's got these uh, rutile crystals running through the quartz here, and some of the colors match really well with that, and I think it kind of looks like it almost curves into that. So I think if we dangle it there and frame it in uh, this shape here, which is actually just, I flipped it around and drew that up there to create an ellipse, kind of. So sometimes you got to look at the stone and figure out what it, you know, what about the stone speaks to you. And in this one, it's this shape that's mirrored in the shape of the stone, and I really like that, so that's why I doubled it and flipped it upside down. But yeah, let's give this a try. I'm going to do kind of a sandwich bale where it's got just a, a bottom piece to hold it onto this wire, and then a top piece to prevent the chain from going out the top, and maybe a border between them so they don't get tangled up. Um, and then a front and a back on it. Uh, for bezel, I'm going to use 3 16 inch fine silver bezel strip in 26 gauge. I'll use that for both of these probably. And, uh, the only thing different on this one is I'll do an open back on it with some uh, 18 gauge wire to create a step. This one I'll just do a closed back with some 26 gauge sheet. So I think the border I'm going to make out a 14 gauge square. The rest I'll probably use 18 or 20 gauge wire for the various little things. Uh, but yeah, let's get started on making some bezels for these guys. We'll start with this one I think. This stuff uh, almost looks like a rhyolite to me. I'm not familiar with Candy Jasper, but I really like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
frequent questions I get is why do I make these into a square or a rectangle when I'm getting ready to solder them when I'm just going to reshape them back into the shape of the stone and for me getting these 90 degree angles on this is much easier than if I was to like you know, curve it or do that kind of thing uh, to get it to line up nice and so I get better solder joints generally the other thing is it allows me to set it upright on the pad because so I like to solder them on the outside. For me, excess solder on the outside is less troublesome than excess solder on the inside. So, um, The other thing is with a big bezel, if you put a little dimple in it like this, it gives it some additional springiness. So those two ends are pushing together nicely. doing a bigger bezel like this uh, oftentimes as a beginner people will get their bezel too hot and melt the bezel before they ever get the bottom sheet up to the soldering temperature some different ways you can do that are you can um, after you get everything fluxed and kind of glued in place with the flux and your solder placed you can tip it up like this and heat from below you can use one of those tripods to get to it um, you could, uh, I suppose you could set it up on a third hand or something, but uh, generally it helps if you can get that sheet hot without exposing the bezel to open flame first. I like that as a, as a trick to keep from doing that. If you're, after you've got some experience, you can probably bop in and out with the heat, you know, without directly engaging the bezel with that flame and end up soldering it okay. But it's a little challenging at first, so heating from the bottom sometimes give you a little advantage to that. So. I don't care if I have some puddles on the inside, the stone is going to be covering it. That's not really a big issue for me. You just want to make sure they're touching the sides and the bottom. If you are going to tip it up, I would uh, recommend heating the flux back up a little bit. So it gets into that kind of gluey stage, a little all sticky, and then your uh, little solder pieces aren't going to move around too much. Then, even if you like tip it up like this, Just kind of tapping it a little, make sure it's touching all the way around. All right, there's one down. 
For this one, we're going to do an open back, but I'm still going to use the same kind of bezel. Um, and we use a, a piece of 18 gauge round wire to create a little lip on the inside of the bezel in order for this to sit down in there. I think we got okay on size there. So if we put this little lip on the inside of here now, and this one I actually will bring to the point, just don't do the bezel to the point, but I think it'll make the most sense to do it this way on these. So let's start by filing the end flat. You could wrap this around a mandrel or whatever you need in order to get the nice curve. I just kind of do it by hand anymore. That's pretty close. I just need to snip that off a little bit. Let's see how that looks. That's really close. It's still trying to not quite get in there, so I'm going to take just a little bit more off. I really care about is that it rides flat on the bottom of the bezel or on the bottom of the inside of the bezel, I should say. Hmm. I could just make a little, little imitation of the shape of the bezel here. Pop that on top and then heat it from the outside. I didn't mention earlier, um, generally for my pieces I use exclusively hard silver sheet solder and uh, a spray on flux called Mighty Flux. I'm just going to file this flat on the bottom. Okay, so now I see you got a nice bottom on that. So that's going to hang above the other stone like this. That'll be pretty. I think we need to make the border around this next, probably, and I'm going to use 14 gauge wire for that. So this is about how long it's going to be, so I need at least twice that, right? Plus some extra for the sides, so let's give it about that much extra. That should be enough, I would think. That way I don't have this big spool of 14 gauge square flopping around while I'm trying to shape this. You could wrap this around a ring mandrel or something like that if you want to. I'm just going to kind of manually shape it. The thing about square wire, though, is, and I've said this a million times in my videos, is when you go to bend it, it's going to try and find an easier way to bend because you're stretching this outer edge immensely to get it to curve and compressing this inner edge. And so it has a tendency to try and twist sideways in order to make that easier for it to, to bend in that way. And so you have to stop periodically and adjust for that little slight twist that starts happening. Trying to kind of zero in on the size and shape here a little bit. One of the problems I had a lot, of, a lot of trouble with when I was starting out was when I was bending things, to get them just right, I would end up dinging up the metal so much. But as I've gone along, I've, I've kind of figured out that it's best 
to use the, the pliers merely to hold the wire and use your fingers to bend things. I definitely mess things up a lot less when I think about it that way. That's very close, so I'm just going to use that as kind of a guide. Cut this off. I gotta get this shaped so that that lines up nicely down there. Sometimes it takes quite a bit of fiddling uh, when you're trying to get something to line up nicely along the outside edge of something else. Like this. Maybe some very subtle changes you need to make in the shape. Like I squished that down flatter here so it was closer in, but now it's further away over here. So you have to kind of keep going back and forth until you get, can you kind of see the gap over here like that? So, flat around the bottom, but now it needs to narrow upwards more this way. So, you just got to kind of work on it. A lot of times when you have a, a completed shape like this, you know, how you bend it in one side over here affects how it is over there. It'll start to bend it because of the, just the configuration of the shape. Let me try and get this straightened out a little bit. getting pretty close. One thing again, you're going to want to make sure I'm going to solder this on at the base here. I want it to be flat down there because the bottom edge of this is going to be nice and flat hopefully. <laughs> and we'll get a better nice seam all the way around there. So let's see if we can get that to happen. So before then I lay it out again I will double check to see if this affected the alignment we had. So I had it pretty close. Mm-hmm. 
I think that's pretty good. So let's see if we can't get that to solder together. That's about as good as it's going to get. Okay, let's see if we can't find a nice flattish spot here. So I have some solder on here. I'm going to throw a few more pieces up here. Adding a little bit extra now from the top. bit of gap up here still. Can't pull that together. Sometimes if you're close, and once the solder starts flowing again, it'll kind of draw it together. You got it okay. Looks like a padlock. I should have called this a padlock. And then, so I want this to hang in the center of that. So I think I'm going to solder a closed ring vertically in the center of that. And then I'll do an open ring on the top of this thing so it has a place to hang from. So I can fring, uh, fring sweetly, swing freely in there. Okay, and then we'll add uh, some kind of thing up top after I make the bale. So let me add, uh, I think I'm going to use 18 gauge for this stuff. So I have a little bit left over from what I was doing earlier. I'm going to solder that closed. Okay, set that to the side for a moment. I think I'm going to snip a little piece out of this one so that I can solder it to either side of the tip of this. So let's just cut a little section out of here. And just kind of solder it on like that. <clears throat> you might notice that I do a lot of pick soldering. Pick soldering is one of those skills that pushes you to a new level, I think, in my uh, opinion. It certainly did for me. It allowed me to place solder a lot more precisely in different places um, that were difficult to, to, to lay a piece of solder. And also just got my whole soldering and paying attention to the heat stuff. Uh, learning how to do pick soldering helped me to figure all that stuff out. So if you're interested, I have a video about pick soldering. You can check it out right there. So. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to cut this one and then re-solder it uh, when we get to that stage. But for now, I'm going to solder this little guy, which we soldered closed a minute ago, to this one. All right. 
Okay, I'll just chuck my tools off to the side. <laughs> That's why I can never find them when I'm looking for them. <laughs> so, let's see if I can kind of push this in a little bit. This is one of those situations where you're soldering something big to something very small. So, if you're trying to figure out how to use a torch well, when you're doing this kind of stuff, since everything needs to be up to the same temperature for to solder easily, the area where the most mass is takes the longest to get hot. So I have a tendency to focus a little bit more over here. The little ring itself will get hot just by being close to that. So I don't focus over there until the very end here. I'm going to use my tweezers now since I wasn't quite touching. So I'm just going to have to manually do that. That hangs pretty centered, so I think we're good. So I want to finish the bale first and then reattach this as the last thing and then we can pickle it. So let's set that aside for a minute. I wanted to make for the bale I want to make something that mirrors the shape of this stone here. Like kind of a, a half of a, an ellipse I guess it would be. So I was going to cut a piece out of 18 gauge for the front. A little bit of 22 for the back with uh, some dividers between here at the bottom and then one in the middle to prevent the chain from getting snagged up with the little ring that's going to hold it on there. So first I'm going to make these little pieces out of this and this, but they need to be the same size. So I did a couple of things off camera. I went ahead and cut these out. One is, this one's 18, this one's um, 22. So I'll use the thin one for the back, the thick one for the front. That's sort of arbitrarily just a choice that I made. You could make it whatever gauge you wanted. This is 12 gauge square that I have filed a little bit. And I'm going to end up putting that up at the top there, solder that down. And then this is another piece of that that has just been bent a little bit. And then another little piece of that that's just kind of a little rectangle which I'll put at the bottom here and then this is going to get soldered on here and that'll go up through that right there this goes on top to cover that all up and then I'll just trim off the excess on the sides so that's what the plan is and then we'll go back and um, well for this one I'm going to solder it one side onto this and the other side not and then we'll slide it over this and then we'll solder that last solder joint there. And then <laughs> we'll put on this last little dangly thing. So let's put the bale together first. So I'm just going to uh, sweat solder, a little bit of solder onto the sides of these, place them where they need to go after I flux, then heat the whole thing until it solders down. And sometimes they do a little hydroplaning around, so I'm going to keep my pick handy in case I need to push it back into place. So we'll do that next. <clears throat> it's probably not called hydroplaning when it's not on water. <laughs> Throw just a little extra on each one of these just to make sure I got enough. And a little bit on here.
I think one, one thing I'm going to do is, before I solder the top board on, is I'm going to round this a little bit up here so the so it flows smoothly around that little loop. Now I think let's sweat a little bit on top of here, here, and here, and then we'll flux this up, flip it over, and get it to all kind of solder together. I'm just going to snip off the things that stick out a little bit. What I did was I widened this hole a little bit because I forgot that I got a little bit bigger chains this time, so I was making it for a smaller size. So I just kind of dremeled that out with a diamond uh, burr and then smoothed it out uh, with a little uh, felt thing that went in there. And so now the chain will fit okay. Um, before we add this on though, I need to solder this onto one side. So I'm going to pick solder just this, this side uh, to it so that I can slide that through there and then solder this one on there. That's pretty good, I think. Look now, get this to flow here without getting anything to stick anywhere else. So let's just see if we can do that. Okay, that's how it's sticking up again. And it's hard to tip on you a little bit. Let's cool this off. So that thing's still moving. Get the other moving piece on there. Okay. Well, should be able to just uh, file this end flat a little bit. I really want stuff to flow right here, but I don't want it to flow anywhere else. So let me spray a little bit of flux on the table here. Use a toothpick to paint it on that spot. I can 
me a little chance of not uh, accidentally soldering something. Like I did to me. Okay, I'm gonna heat this all up and let it pickle for a bit. And I will come back and polish it and then we can set the stones. I went ahead and I set the the uh, rutilated quartz, but I'm gonna go ahead and set this one in front of you. I usually use the side of my needle nose pliers here. Start at these corners which I thinned out just a little bit. Do a little bit of burnishing here. Do a little cleanup polishing on that. I think uh, you know, I made the bale a little bigger than I was going to do that before, but it's basically what I was shooting for here. I think that'll be pretty. So I'll get that finished up and take some nice pictures and put them at the end. All right, well, that was the uh, candy jasper uh, pendant uh, where the stone kind of dictated the design for me. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Uh, I'd love to have you leave a comment. Uh, I would recommend, if you're new to the channel, uh, check out a few of my other videos. I just passed 220 videos, I think, that I've made over the past uh, year. Almost two years, I think, it's coming up on. You know. But uh, I think March next year will be two years. So um, check some of those out. There's lots of different stuff. There's uh, beginner stuff, intermediate stuff, advanced stuff. And if you check out the playlist section, uh, it's split up into those categories, as well as categories like pendants, uh, bracelets, rings, or just tips. You know, So check those out. That's a good way to navigate my channel. Uh, I'd love to have you subscribe after you do that. And don't forget to hit the video description for the various relevant links, like my Patreon site, uh, if you want to just buy me a, a coffee as a tip, uh, if you want to check out my merch site or my website where you can buy jewelry. Those are all there. So thanks for watching. Take care. Happy silversmithing.